Oh, there he is. Got it. Oh, crap. There's a good crappie. Good crappie. Howdy do and welcome back to the channel everybody. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank y'all from the last video, all the uh, awesome comments and just loving that video because man it felt good to catch that big old mondo. And today we were heading out to another lake that is known for giant bass and it is literally what started up my life as a fishing freak, the world famous Lake Fork. But before we get out on the water, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, which is Techron Marine Fuel Treatment. First of all, let me say, if you guys are not using a fuel system treatment in your marine engines, you better. If you're fishing constantly every day, running your motor, that's actually a good thing for it. It's kinda of like your car. But if you're like most people, and even like me, where you're letting your boat sit for a week at a time or a couple weeks at a time, that's kind of a rare stretch for me. But even then, I like to have some sort of treatment in my fuel to make sure that the engine's not getting gummed up. Tecron is great. They put a ton of research behind their product. Chevron, of course, making some of the best fuels on the planet. And they treat all different types of fuel systems. But for this marine treatment system, particularly focuses on rust prevention and cleaning your engine components while you're running this stuff. So especially if you have an older motor, it's gonna help clean that engine up and get better performance as you use it. Best thing to do for your motor, get you some Tecron and use it at every fill up. This stuff is 10 ounces right here, treats up to 100 gallons. So that's gonna last you quite a long time, especially if you're running a smaller motor. As you guys know, I like to go out on the deep dangle sometimes. Like this time, I'm out in East Texas. Sometimes there's not a whole lot of gas stations around. And a little tip for you, try to fill up at the places that frequently are going through gas where there's a lot of activity because you get out to some of them places and there's like one car there a week, that fuel is gonna be a little stale. That's when you especially need something like Tecron in your fuel system. And if you're taking a long pause from the dangle, Tecron's got you covered, stabilizes your fuel up to two years. Now, thankfully, I live in the great state of Texas and I never have to winterize my boat, but if any of y'all are north of the wall, you need to stabilize your boat for the winter, Tecron's got you covered. There'll be links down in the description where you can check out Tecron Marine, but you can pick it up basically at any West Marine store nationwide wide walmart.com or you can go to techronclean.com and they'll show you exactly the benefits and the features of of techron at a detailed level so thank you techron for sponsoring today's video and keeping my engine clean now let's get out to the world famous waters of lake fork and experience some outdoor greatness y'all oh man i'm glad you're here i'm glad we're here together on the sunrise moment here at lake Fork, Texas, baby. Uh, Y'all that are new to the channel, this is literally the place that changed my life. I was into fishing, always been into fishing, but when I came here, I went out with a guide, me and a buddy of mine. When I was a young man, I saw what was underneath the water and it changed me. It made me want to dedicate my life to bass fishing and try to figure out how to catch bass. I've never seen anything like it. This is back in the day when Fork had a lot of grass, clear water, you can see in the water really good. Nowadays, it's still good. The fish are just kind of hidden in other spots and uh, this lake makes you a really good angler. When you're here all the time trying to figure out these Florida strain, mostly bass, it makes you a real good angler to go anywhere else and, and uh, learn a lot of techniques here. But anyways, I'm here today. I got uh, Billy with uh, YourLakeForeGuide.com. He was nice enough to let me and Lunkers TV stay at his crib last night. And he's, uh, he's taking out Lunkers right now. So I'm um, coming back from my other trip, coming off a 10 pounder, baby. So life is good. I mean, I'm feeling really good about today. Um, what I'm gonna be doing though is I'm gonna be targeting bass and some crappie. I'm gonna try both. I hear they're up in the shallows. Hey buddy, where are you going? It smells like shad right here. Do you smell it? It smells like watermelon candy. I love it. Oh, is it? I don't know. I've been smelling that for 10 years out here. Where are you going? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. Woohoo! 
A little morning hair do you? How about it? I just rocked out. Just say I went 50 in a fast boat. Water temps looking around the 60 degree mark. This is uh, this is when you can get out on the, the points and do some damage on some big ones. See, here's the problem with me on four. Is I'm just I'm, so many bass memories come back. I'm like, oh man, I yeah, I remember this spot. I remember this spot. And this spot and here, 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 here. And it's like I can't I can't ever focus on the the matter at hand. You know because I'm always thinking about other spots, but I'm gonna start in this one creek that normally has a later spawn and see if there's any that are gonna pull up. I'm gonna start fishing uh, just some moving baits, you know, probably throw a swim bait and stuff like that, and then uh, go from there. If I see some shallow, ooh! <laughs> That's what this lake's known for. Big stumps. Okay, I gotta focus, I gotta idle through here. And we're off to the races, everybody. Oh man, hitting the hitting the pavement here with um with a swim bait, a five inch swim bait, with a little uh, spinning hook on it, and then I've also tied on a frog. I had a frog tied on from the other lake. There is a lot of scum and a lot of shallow bushes around, so my strategy here is just kind of. Slowly swim that swim bait through there, work a frog, you know, maybe throw a chatter bait a little bit. Well, it's been no luck throwing the swimmer so far. Probably gonna end up breaking out a jig. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a crying shame not to break out a black and blue jig on Lake Fork in March. If I don't get anything on this bank, I'm going to change locales and maybe even change up species. Here the crappie are up in the shallows right now. Decided to change methods, y'all. Headed into the, the back of a creek right now. One of my buddies, his grandpa used to live over there. And there's some, some brush back here. And I'm hoping that some crappie are moved up into this brush to spawn. It's a good place to bass fish too. Actually, Rob and Billy are right over there. And uh, they're doing some blind bed fishing. Uh, basically what that is, is you're just looking for sandy spots. You're not really seeing the fish. It's kind of overcast. You can't really sight fish too well today. So that's how they're tackling that. I want some dropping. I caught one. I literally have one in my cooler. I need a bunch more. I'd love to come home with at least a dozen. Well, not the right species. We got ourselves a bass. It's quite a small bass. I actually got that one throwing a little rooster tail. Just trying to see if there's any any active crappies in here. Oh, another little bass. I'm trying to throw this uh, this rooster tail. Let's see if I can get a crappie on the line. And then jig for him a little bit more. So far, he's catching little bass. Okay, this is not a crappie, but it is just as delish. That is a yellow bass, folks. And I think I just had another one follow me up right here. Normally I catch these in super deep water, but they might be spawning as well. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Big crappie, big crappie, big crappie. Come in here. Oh yeah, that's a Mondo. And let's pull it down here. All right, y'all. There's a freaking toad crappie right there now. Woo! Golly, that's what I was looking for. Hit that rooster tail. Big. Hopefully we can get in a mess of those. Oh, there's another one. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Uh-oh. This might be a bass or a big crappie. Got me in a tree. Oh, still there. Still there. It's either a big crappie or it's a bass. 
Oh gosh, is this a catfish? What the heck is this? This is a catfish. Oh boy, that'll eat good. Man, y'all, you start throwing a little rooster tail around, you catch everything. There you go, that's a nice jump cat. I'll stick him on this side. Got him, got him. Oh my gosh, this might be another species. Nope, it's a yellow. Sweet, yellow bass. And there's no limit on these guys. He absolutely hose hounded it. There's no limit and no length limit on these. You do just want to keep the bigger ones. So the small ones are just hard to fillet. I'm guessing there's a little school. There's another one. Got him. Feels like a yellow. They are running back here to spawn, baby. Got to watch the gill plates on these suckers too. They'll get you. We're loading it up. Oh, there he is. Got it. Oh, crap. There's a good crappie. Good crappie. Good crappie. Come here. God, he hammered it. He just hammered it. Another hammer. God. Lake Fork, you are so good, man. Lake Fork, man. Such a healthy fishery. Ah, and there's white and black crappie in here. I'm gonna try just throwing the uh, regular old crappie jig. Oh, just had one right there. Mm. Got him, got him, right there. Crappie right behind the boat. Oh my gosh, good one, good one. Another hammer. Look at these guys. Absolute hammers. Caught him on the jig. Oh, baby. Got him right in the schnoot. Look at that, y'all. These are all toad crappies. So there's just a kind of a mess of them. There's another one. Got it. Oh my gosh, I'm on the hand. I'm on the juice. On the juice. Get away from that pole. Get away from that pole. Come here, baby. Oh yes. These are just absolute hammers. <laughs> another toad next cast. Oh man. Hello? Dangling, bro. Dangling. Uh, I'm on a hot spot right here. I can't leave. So let me let me fish this little hole out. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. oh, God. He absolutely choked a crappie jig. We are getting the meats. Oh, got him. Oh, that's a good crappie. Good crappie. Come on, baby. Get around that pole. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Another hammer. Another whammer jammer hammer slammer. God. Absolutely crushing them. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Toads, baby. Freaking toads. That's number five, and it, they're just huge. They're just massive. All right, let me show you guys the rig here. My Yampa River, as you guys have seen in many, many videos, my creek fishing videos, and a lot of crappie fishing videos. It's, it's the ultimate crappie fishing pole. It's super sensitive, it's really light. You can whip little jigs out with it like this. This is a 16th ounce jig head with a sick sickle hook on it. It bends out really easy, so you, if you get a caught in brush or on dock, you can just pull it out. When you guys sent this in to me, what, somebody around DFW that has like a crappie tackle store. I need to go in there, but anyway, I, I feel bad because I can't remember the name. Uh, but y'all sent this in to me. I've been alternating between this, uh, this little lake fork. Uh, it's a, I think it's a micro shad is what it's called. Really good little crappie bait. And uh, some other ones that you guys sent in. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this color a shot because the other one I was using that had a pink tail. It uh, boogered up on me. Eight pound test line. Actually, I think this is six fluoro. Oh, 
Oh, golly, that's a good one. That's a good crappie. Come here, come here, baby. Good crappie right here. Pulling that drag, son. Oh, giant, giant. Come on now, get up out of that brush. Oh, Lee, these are just all hammers. They're all hammers, baby. Ah, this looks like a black crappie. Got him. Y'all, oh, absolutely hammering it. That one just knocked slack in my line. Pretty fish. I'm just kind of working this jig through those trees. Comes through there a little slower than the rooster tail. There's another big crappie, another big one. Come on, baby, get up out of there. Get up out of there. Get up out of there. Oh, we have just found the hammers. We have just found the hammers spawning in the shallows, y'all. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. So much fun. Uh, there is yet to be a small one. So uh, for, for all y'all that are new to crappie fishing, 10 inches is, is the keeping length. This is just well beyond that. They are hammering, the, hammering this little Lake Fork micro shad too. As soon as I switch to it, it's been every cast. Well, we are going to be eating real nice. Pop it through there. Just give a little pop. Oh, there he is again. 16th ounce jig sinks so slow. Oh my gosh, this is a hammer. This is a hammer. Oh my gosh. These are just massive crappie. And then they're pounding it. I mean, it's, it's swallowed. It's swallowed. This one's got it so good. This is how you know you're using what they want right here. Mm. Look at the size. Look at the size of this crappie. And look what's down there. That's a pig, baby. That's a pig. Well, the boys are bass fishing right now. They wanted to go to lunch, but I just told them I can't right now. I'm on a hot streak. As soon as they're done biting, we're gonna go eat. But, oh, boy. Start to figure out the technique a little bit. There's another one. Oh, they're just all up in this bush. Get out of there. They're all hammers. They're all hammers. God, this is fun on this yomp. Fun on this yomp, y'all. Absolutely amazing rod for this. I think this is one of the smallest ones. No need to measure at all. Come on, baby. Twitch it through there over those treetops. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's not as big, but he's still nice. <sighs> baby. Got them crappies figured out. It's a black crappie. Beautiful. Only one I've had to measure so far. Almost 12. Y'all, I'm so excited because the last time I remember doing this, me and my dad were up in Canada and it wasn't this, this hot where they were just biting just about every cast, but just catching hammers up there in the shallows when they were spawning. And it's, it's just rare for me. I've never done it. It's just such a cool bite. I mean, it's just like bass fishing, except miniaturized, and they are delicious. Oh, there's one. Ah, oh, God, it's ever cast. The crappie spawn a little bit before the bass. They move into the same areas, same shallow areas. I've been catching some bass in here as well. And they make those beds uh, just like the bass do, but you can hardly see them with the naked eye. There's not even a need to throw uh, minnows. You can throw those little underspins, those road runners, uh, obviously a rooster tail. You see me catch them on those and then just a simple old jig. So these jig heads, the, the hooks are designed where you can, you can just bend them back. So that's what I've been doing. Just take my little pliers, 
bend them back. And I just put my put my little crappie thing on. I gotta get another bait. Caught like eight fish on that bait. They tore it up. The baby shad. That's what this is called. Not the micro shad. I think I was calling it the micro shad. Lake Fork Trophy Lures. That's the tackle store I used to live in. They're making some some killer crappie stuff. All right, I got a little lime green unit. Let's see if a little color change will get them switched back on. Oh, there's one. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh boy, you are a big one. Yes, sir. Come here. Get around those poles. Ha ha. One more big one. Come to pop a big old black crappie, y'all. Nice fish. Golly. Y'all I've never, I've never been on a crappie bite this hot, like in the shallows. You know, I've been wanting to figure this out for months now. And to figure it out today, it feels so good. There was a moment though, where it was just every cast, there's another one. It's like they turned back on or something. Come here, buddy. Golly. Oh yeah, baby. They're all big. They're, dude, they're all like 15 inches. They're hammers. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, doggy. Hey, let me, let me show you how to dangle, son. Y'all look at the massiveness of crappies. Mmm, so good. And we got some yellow bass in there, and we got a catfish. We have done well. I caught all the crappie I could catch right there. Instead of going and trying to catch my limit, because these are so huge, I'm actually going to uh, just take these home right here. I am so excited that I finally got to figure out crappies in the shallows, and I'm gonna expand on that technique more when I need more fish. You know what we gotta do, man. We gotta turn them into golden crispies, baby. So, let's get back to the house, get to cleaning them, and put them in some grease to feed the whole family. Well, that's what you're not supposed to do right there. Okay, so when that happens, and you will do it, all right, don't act like you've never done it before. This is why I really like this clamp deal, and it helps you get on there a lot easier instead of using your, your thumbnails. And then there you go. I mean, that's real, real easy to do. Fat, crappie, pork chop. Oh, no, almost dropped it. So I had a few 15 inchers in the Average size was 14 inches, which is crazy. <sighs> Look at these slabs, y'all. I got a bunch more of these to clean. Look at the back paint on them. Woo, man. I think we're gonna do, I think we're gonna do Frank's Red Hot, at least half Frank's Red Hot. That's a recipe I've, I've done before, uh, and it is a classic. It is good. And maybe just some traditional for mom, because she likes that traditional. But anyways, we'll see you at the Rackley Family Fish Fry and get these recipes on these delicious slabs. If you're not a fish eating person and you just wanna try it, uh, get into fish, this is gonna change your life right here, y'all. But what I'm gonna do today, instead of using the Frank's Red Hot, is I'm gonna try the Texas Pete hot sauce. This is a new one that I haven't tried. I saw it in the grocery store. I was like, I'm gonna give that one a shot. Now what that does, it basically gives you your coating to then batter your fish uh, in the flour and then put them into uh, the grease. These, this is gonna be two fried recipes, but one's with cornmeal, traditional. This other one is more like a hot wing and it's absolutely delish. So after I clean the crappie, you know, I washed them off, I hosed them off of all the scales and we have just beautiful fillets like that. These are huge and those crappie were so big. Another thing I could have done was throw them on a big green egg and uh, actually grill them on the half shell. That's another recipe for the future. Don't worry, crappie time is not over. That is the nugget size right there. I feel like with that thickness, you put those in the grease and you make them all similar and they'll, they'll fry up all the same way. You just want enough to cover fish completely. 
already shook it up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. That's gonna be enough, and that's gonna act as uh, your stickiness. To then you you can then put it in the flour, just regular flour with a little bit of pepper. Ready? We're gonna take these over Woo! to LFD's house. That's I right. Smell it. Sniff that cayenne, baby. It's gonna be good and delicious in your mouth. Don't worry. It's not gonna be too spicy. I promise. Whole bottle should do it. That's it. We got mega crappies, Dad. Hey, I'm excited about mega. Them. Have yeah. I shown you pictures? I, s I saw your bass. I hadn't seen the crappie. Okay. Let's, I caught those just down the way from where you caught your seven last yeah. week. No you, kidding. Yeah. I got to go catch some of these. You want to catch some crappie? And then I got one catfish in there too. Oh. A little bonus. Oh, a little yeah. bonus whisker biscuit. This mixture right here, this is a, the traditional recipe for Bomb. She, she just likes that traditional stuff. But it is uh, two parts cornmeal, one part flour. And all you do is, uh, is just drop them on in. There's a little bit of salt involved. Not much. And stick them in the grease. So it's time to take them out and the goldenness has been achieved. Sometimes crappie are so good you don't even need ketchup, but I'd like a little hot sauce. Ho! Oh, oh. Dagum, we lost the owl house. The wind is so terrible it, it blew the th daggum thing down. Shoot, I'll just leave it down here. Yeah. Crazy weather. I'm glad I was fishing yesterday and not today. It's traditional that the men do a taster tester first, just to make sure there's no poison in there that's gonna, you know, hurt the ladies. All right, Dad, we should split one? We should. There's not a whole lot here. We got some left for the for the ladies, but uh, let's take a take a good chunker here. Split it. <sighs> Cheers to golden crispies, man. Oh my gosh, that's good. Really good. That is really really good. And now I must try. Oh yeah. Without even ketchup. Wow. We. That is what you're getting with the crappie. The flakiness, oh man, golden. Little bit of pepper, little bit of salt. You gotta get you some of that, I'm telling you. That is worth a serious dangle for. It's crappie time. Now it is time for that Texas Pete, y'all. I'm really interested in the Texas Pete and to see if it is different than the Frank's Red Hot, if it's better or worse. I think the Frank's Red Hot Buffalo sauce, it has like a gooierness, like a stickier uh, effect that really makes a, a good batter. So the Texas Pete seems a little bit thinner, but we're gonna see no pepper in there, no salt, all the spices are included, and it's going in straight flour. Spicy this, a little spiciness. I mean, who doesn't like hot wings, first of all? Goes fantastic with your favorite light beer. I got some. Whee -whee. Time for the Texas Peatness. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that. See, I, did, I like that texture better myself. It's, it's really, it, it's about the texture. What an incredible day on the water. That, that produced so much more meat than I thought. You know, traditionally, you catch a dozen crappie. It's enough for, you know, uh, probably the four of us, but because they were so big, I've got uh, two additional meals out of it, which is incredible. Just awesome fillets. The Texas Pete, oh, it's time. It's time for a taste test, y'all. This is it. Oh! Oh yeah. We in business. Oh man, the flakiness, the flakiness with the flour, and it tastes like a wing. There's a wing aftertaste. Oh man, that is just too good. Look at the thickness on that crappie too. Mmm, man. Wow. Give that recipe a shot. I'll leave the instructions down below, but it's easy as you saw. You basically just pour it in there and add, add the spices for you. It's basically just that and flour. Delicious. 
I was so pumped to go out there and catch those crappie the way I did, y'all. I've been wanting to, to get on that little pattern for so long and try to figure that out. And I finally did, and now I, I want to go take it to other places. It's just fun, and I'd, I'd love to catch a really big one, like a really big crappie. Like, try to catch a three-pounder or something like that. They're really a cool fish, and they're obviously tasty. They're the tastiest freshwater fish, in my opinion, at least down here. Walleye different category. That's where we're going to leave it today, y'all. I got to get in there and eat me some of those crappie. And if y'all want to stay tuned for the next fishing trip, fishing's going to be good for the next few months, y'all. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned. Subscribe right here to the channel. Hit the notification button so you don't miss a single dangle. And make sure to go ahead and hit that like button. I sure would appreciate it. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next day.